How are we doing today, guys? I'm doing pretty well myself. Uh, today, this is a uh, requested video from one of my subscribers. We're talking about how to publish your own music. So this applies to artist releases like your band or your, you know, solo artist stuff. And also to non-exclusive sync licensing music. So let's get started. All right. How to publish your own music. For artist music, a.k.a. your original songs, it is preferred, obviously, to publish your own music and keep 100% of the rights. I think we would all agree with that. The upgraded deals on services like CD Baby actually can be negative for you because they take some of the publishing away from you. So we'll talk about that. Ideally, you want to own the full song, as we all do. For sync licensing music, I'm going to just say that I've had the best success when working with music libraries that actually take the full publishing share. You can, however, publish music on your own and try to work with non-exclusive libraries, royalty-free libraries, sync agents, and even directly with music supervisors. That requires uh, you to do some research, but yeah, all those things you can do. If you plan to publish your own music, you should first be a member of a PRO, a performing rights organization, such as ASCAP or BMI in the U.S. or PRS in the U.K. or whatever. There, there's lots of them in, in all the countries. And for certain PROs, you'll need a songwriter account and a publisher account. So in the U.S., uh, ASCAP requires a separate publisher account, while BMI does not. So if you're in one of those, then you'll either need an extra account or you won't. So first and foremost, you got to be part of a PRO if you're, not, if you're a musician that writes music and you're not already, sign up immediately. Do some research and find out which one would be best for you. Okay, so that's just a prerequisite. Before you release the music, I would recommend the following. Okay, three, three things that I'm going to recommend. It's not 100% necessary, but I highly recommend that you do these. Number one, copyright your music. In the U.S., you can do this through copyright.gov. Some people will say this is unnecessary because technically your music is copyrighted the moment that it is performed publicly. But, you know, who's going to know about that? Copywriting your music is the only way to legally cover your tracks and prove ownership. Okay, so I suggest that I always do that for my singles or albums that I release uh, for my artist music or any band I've ever been in. Okay, number two. Apply for your own ISRC codes. You can do this on a website called USISRC. Assuming you're in the US. I've used this for my own stuff in the US. Um, if you don't know what an ISRC is, it's the International Standard Recording Code. So it's a code that's embedded into every recording that's released on um, you know, Spotify, Apple Music, anything through uh, digital service providers or DSPs. So every track has a code, um, an ISRC code, if it's been released. And, uh, you know, DistroKid and, and TuneCore and CD Baby, they can provide these for you, actually usually free of charge. But I suggest that you apply for your own codes, and I'll tell you why. Uh, anyway, so on USISRC, there's several ways that you can do this, but I suggest paying their one-time fee which allows you up to it allows you to assign up to 100,000 ISRC codes to your recordings every year. Look on their site for the current pricing, but when I did it several years ago, I think it was like $95. They have like a la carte where you can just pay however much for each release, but you might as well just get your own unique code and you can assign as many as you want essentially every year. The reason I recommend using your own ISRC codes is because it proves that you're the author of your recordings. DSPs like CD Baby can assign you free codes, but those will have their company's unique code on there, which makes it look like their property. So just a quick background on ISRCs. The first two digits or characters in the code will be the country code, so whichever country you are that's releasing it. You then have a three-character unique code that's unique to you. So like CD Baby and District Kid and stuff, they, I'm sure they have many, many of these. But if you get apply for your own, you might get like, I don't know, QJ, 
six for your code or whatever it is. Um, that unique code shows specifically who the, the author is or the owner is of this. If you use CD Baby's generic, one of their generic codes that they have, it'll look like it's their property. So you have the, the country code, the three digit unique code, and then you have the year that it was published. So like it's 2024, so it would be 24. And then there's five digits after that, which is just numerically uh, what you have released that year. So for example, let's say US QJ6 24 00001. That would be your first um, ISRC code that you for the first recording you've released for the year of 2024. And then 00002 for the next one and so on. So I, I might do a separate video about ISRC codes, but uh, that's kind of in a nutshell. All right. And then before you release your music, my suggestion number three is to also join a content ID collection service such as Identify. This allows you to collect content ID royalties from YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Some uh, digital service providers will try to collect these on your behalf and take a cut. And that's another one of, one of the CD Baby, um, the additional things you can add, like uh, the pro plan or whatever. But no, they, they're just digging more into your royalties. So if you join Identify or something similar, you can collect your own royalties for that stuff and you'll keep uh, pretty much all of it. They take a small cut, um, Identify or whatever because they got to make some money. Um, joining on your own ensures that you own those rights and you can opt out of the privilege on sites such as CD Baby. Identify and other services are free to join and they just take a small portion of the royalties because they need to make some money. So those are my three recommendations. Let's move on. Now that you've copyrighted your music, joined a PRO and applied for ISRC codes and joined a content ID collection service, you're ready to publish your music. Uh, first thing you want to do is register your songs on your PRO. Ideally, you would do this before ever performing the song live or recording it, but most definitely you want to do it before releasing the music online. When registering your music with your PRO, you put down important details like songwriter shares, publisher shares, the song length, intended use, if it was going to be for TV or a commercial or something, you'd put that, um, an ISRC code for each version of the track, etc. Fill out as much as you can and submit it. It doesn't take long. You can publish the music through any digital service provider, such as TuneCore, DistroKid, CD Baby, and so on. Do some research on which one of these you want to work with. I'm not going to be biased in this video. We're just uh, mentioning some of them, but there's a lot of them out there now. So some of them do um, like DistroKid. I know you pay like $10 per year and you can put as many as you want. CD Baby, on the other hand, you pay per release but there's no like recurring payments that you need to make. Take a look and see what uh, which one you want to do. Okay, then upload your music to a DSP. Make sure to insert your own ISRC code, opt out of their content ID collection services if they have it, and opt out of their sync licensing services if they have it. That stuff, for one, is going to earn you very minimal money, and, and they're just going to take some of your royalties from that. And I've never had any sync licensing placements through CD Baby or anything. No, it's... Everything that I've earned has been through libraries or uh, sync agents or anything like that. So yeah, it's they don't have like somebody actively pitching your specific music. It's just that they are uploading their catalogs to the Facebook and Instagram, uh, the databases and whatnot. So you want to opt out of the content ID collection services and the sync licensing because those will put your stuff into the content ID service and you want to do it on your own. All right, before the music goes live, it's a good idea to put the recordings on Identify or whichever service you use similar to that. This ensures that any applicable uses on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram will earn you royalties. Um, when submitting the music to Identify, it, it's kind of the way that you do it on your PRO. You'll fill out some details, the publisher and the songwriter and whatnot. So you'll fill out as much as you can, and you actually will upload the recording on there. That's how they can... Uh, track it and find uses of it on YouTube and whatnot. All right. Once you've done all that, you can feel free to submit your music to any non-exclusive sync licensing opportunities. I suggest working with boutique non-exclusive libraries. 
sync agents, and maybe submitting to music supervisors if you do your research properly. So if you're going to submit to a music supervisor, you really want to find the specific show that they supervise. And you should really have music that's almost identical or very similar to what they use on their show. Um, if you're just like shooting in the dark, you're just going to annoy them and they might block you or something. So only do that if you really are confident that the stuff that you have is very similar to what they use in their show already. Um, personally, I like to avoid submitting my artist music to royalty free sites such as Audio Jungle, Pond5 and Artlist. Um, my artist music is not something I want watered down. I actually, it's real instruments that I'm recording and I go in the studio and, and pay for it and everything. So I don't want to be selling it for pennies on Pond5 or whatever. So I suggest you don't do that either. Because let's say you put the music into a boutique uh, library like Crucial or Tune Edge or something like that. They'll earn you a lot more money per sync than these other ones will. In fact, I've heard a story, okay? Somebody had uh, their music on a lot of non-exclusive sites. They probably had it on Crucial and, and whatever, but also Pawn 5 and Artlist and everything. So um, I think it was Crucial Music that was like trying to make a deal with a client that wanted to license the music for... It was like might have been a movie or independent movie or something um, where they wanted, I don't know, probably four figures for the track to use it in the project. They didn't want to pay that, so they... They found the same track on a non-exclusive royalty-free site and they got a subscription for one month and paid $10 or whatever. So they licensed it for basically nothing. You don't want that to happen. I wouldn't want that to happen. That's why I don't put my big artist music on sites like that. I, you want it to be a Cadillac. You don't want it to be a little, uh, I don't know what's, what's a bad car brand, but uh, you want it to be worth what it's worth and not just just another royalty-free garbage track throwaway, you know. However, if you're releasing your, your music specifically for sync licensing, then maybe you do want to use royalty-free sites just to maximize your avenues. You know, if you recorded it in your bedroom or whatever, or just home studio, it's your call. You know, I started out doing a lot of royalty-free stuff, and, you know, I made usually a decent amount a month, like 100, couple hundred bucks from just those things but it's a lot different than it was when i started you know six seven years ago there's some sites that aren't around anymore so uh just do it at your own risk if you want to do royalty free i mean some people make money doing it but if you really value the uh per license price of your music then stick to a boutique and other opportunities such as uh sync agents and whatnot another thing um if this music is intended strictly for sync then I would suggest that you make all of the typical alternate edits of your music. So instrumental version, underscore, 30 second, 60 second, stinger, etc. All these alternate edits will increase your chances of getting the music licensed. So if it was a commercial that they're looking for music and you have a 30 second edit of the track, that looks appealing to them. So that would be what they would use and they wouldn't have to edit it themselves. So make your alternate edits, yes. If you do an exclusive libraries i know that's not what this video is about but they like a library would usually tell you which edits they want but for this for non-exclusive make all of them loop 30 seconds 60 etc bass and drum if if it's uh applicable to the type of music you're doing i will also say that for sync music you'll get exponentially more from my experience exponentially more tv placements when working with exclusive libraries if you plan to work with exclusive libraries, then you don't want to publish the music on your own because they won't take it. If it's already published, they're publishers. So they will publish the music. They're going to make the artwork and everything. And they'll, they'll create the ISRCs and whatnot. Non-exclusive music libraries tend to be geared more towards YouTubers and small budget clients, you know, maybe wedding vi videographers. Also, the royalty-free market is not something I would bother with this day and age, to be honest. I still have a catalog on Pond5 and some stuff on Audio Jungle and stuff, but I don't upload any more stuff to there because it's they're low balling it. It's so cheap. And lots of these, the clients on those sites, I think are moving over to AI generated music anyway. So yeah, take that for what it's worth. I don't work with that. You might, some people might, might do pretty well with it. But um, if I was just starting in the music licensing business, in 2024 right now 
I wouldn't bother with royalty free. Just telling you what I think. So yeah, guys, those are my recommendations for how to publish your music on your own. Using these methods will maximize your earnings and will ensure you maintain full ownership of your music. This is a viewer requested topic, by the way. So I want to thank Dodgy Scampton 5668 for suggesting this one. And thank you for watching, guys. Best of luck to everybody. Let me know what you want me to cover next.